Welcome to my channel. I'm Zhang Jingxu. Let's look at the problem forty-two at chapter eight. This problem is about the conservation of energy. It's a very typical model. We can see the first is a box is just connected with a spring, and this box and spring is just on the slope. The angle of theta is given. Also, the spring's constant k is given, and the initial position and the balanced position we assume it is there is given, right? First, we can see the box just uh, comprise the spring at the position one. At the position one, initial velocity is zero, and then the spring comprised. So x one is negative zero point five meter, y one is zero. Do you agree? Yes. And then it asks us to find the uh how far up the slope will the mass move before come to stationary. If this mass is not attached to the spring, so what I mean what that means that means the final the final position let's say position two the box is there box is there but the spring just come to there so this two attach and did and disattach just disconnected it tell us this mass is not attached with the spring so spring just reaches to the balanced point and then this one the box is there so in this one we can see. Um, at this position, it tell us come to stationary. So V two is zero, X two is zero because spring is there. So we need to find Y two, right? Y two is unknown. What we need to find is how much the spring moves. So from the initial to there, this we call it D. Okay, D. And then how can you find the D? This looks like we can get it from the Y two and the Y one. You can say this is y2, this is y1, so this side is y2 minus y1, agree? This is angle theta, so very easily you can get y2 minus y1 equal to d sine theta. And then we consider the conservation of the energy. So we can say initial energy equals the final energy, agree? So initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy includes the elastic energy and the gravitational potential energy equals the final energy. Final kinetic energy plus final elastic energy plus the final um, gravity per potential energy. And then we input the known quantities. V1 is 0, Y1 is 0, say V2 is 0, X2 is 0. Now we look at Y2. How can we find it? 0, right? Because Y2 minus Y1 D sine theta, 0, Y1 is 0. So you can get Y2 is D sine theta. Input it 0. See, this equation becomes much simple. And then we can solve the D by using this equation. It is 0 0.73 meter. In this equation, because x1 is given, mass is given, g is a constant, sine theta, theta is given. So very easily you can get the D. The second one tells us if the mass is attached to the spring, uh, how far up the slope will move. So this time, since get a chance, the initial the initial position still everything is there, but as a final position, we can say the box is there, and also the spring reaches to there. So the x two we don't know yet, y two we don't know yet, right? So in this one, we can still consider the energy is conserved. Similarly, we have y two minus y one equal to d sine theta. This one is easy, but how how you find x two? So you can say final position x2 is 0, initial position x1 is 0, so x2 minus x1 is d. Agree? This is how much the box moved d. And still the energy is conserved as the previous question. So now we input the known quantities. We can find v1 0, y1 0, and v2 0. And x2 can just input as d plus x1. Agree? And this mg y2, y2 is d sine theta. This is vd because y1 is 0. It's very easy. Then we can solve this equation. Because inside this equation, the only quantity unknown is d. I think very easy you can solve this d is 0 0.66 meter. The next problem is uh, now this slope has the coefficient for kinetic fraction. What does that mean? That means from now on, we need to consider the fraction fraction force and also tell, uh, tell you the box is attached to the spring uh, so you need to and also it observed to stop just reaches to the balanced position 
right? Just uh, reaches to the balanced position. What is the coefficient for the friction? So for this one, we can see still we have the y2, x2, agree? y2, x2, and then what's next? The next is finally this box just reaches to zero. And we need to consider the friction because it tells you the mu k. Still, we consider the energy is conserved. Initial energy equals to the final energy. So initial kinetic energy plus initial elastic potential energy plus initial gravitational potential energy equals to the final energy, final kinetic energy, final elastic energy, final gravity potential energy, and also thermal energy. Because there, we consider what? We consider friction force. Friction force do the work. Agree? Friction force is mg cosine theta. This is because you can, friction force is mu k fn. mg cosine theta equals the normal force. We did that multiple times. If you don't understand, you can look at my previous videos. So mu k mg cosine theta is the friction force times the d, how much it moved d. And then this d is get. In this case, we find x2 is 0, so make the x d equal to neg negative x1. Agree? D equal to negative x1. And then we input the known quantities. Input the known quantities. You can say this one, v1 is 0, y1 is 0, v2 is 0, x2 is 0. Y2 can be write as d sized. And then this d is 0, and then v we can solve this equation. We find x1 just equal to d. If you input inside input it, and you find mu k is 0 0.4. So this problem looks seems very difficult, but when you just consider it as a conservation of energy, consider the initial energy, final energy, and then in which cases in which cases we need to consider the friction force, which cases not then it will be easy. If you tell, if the problem tell you the coefficient of kinetic friction, that means you must consider the friction force. If it didn't tell you, just take it as frictionless surface, right? And also, uh, in these problems, uh, we need to consider the position, y2, y1, so y2, y1, and how it connected with x2, x1, and the distance it moved d. Thank you.